What is going on? Welcome to the January 2019 market update, whatever you want to call it. So obviously it's been a crazy, crazy couple of months. And this is actually probably going to be the most important one that you're going to be hearing all year. And the reason being is that the stock market is all over the place. You don't know where to put the money. Should we keep it in the market? Should we invest in something else? Should we sell our home? Should we 1031? What should we do? So let's get right into it. So we're going to go with uh, Manhattan, Brooklyn and Queens, the, the three boroughs that, you know, we kind of deal with. Sorry the Bronx and Staten Island. So first of all, with Manhattan, let's talk about pricing. So pricing actually fell 3.3% and the, the amount of reasons are a multitude. The first one is that more homes actually entered the marketplace. So the pricing went down 3.3%. The amount of homes that entered the marketplace is 1,400. 1400 just in Manhattan entered the marketplace. We're going to talk about Brooklyn and Queens and everything like that. But this is interesting is that the amount of recorded sales was actually up. And the reason being is that it's towards the end of the year. A lot of people need to get this done before not only 1031 or tax reasons, but they just want to get it done in December instead of pulling it into January. So we were in a situation like that where we needed to sell an apartment and we needed to close. So we closed literally the day, the 31st. That being said, in January, I think we're going to see a lower amount of recorded sales with the same amount of inventory still going up. So inventory is up 18%. The amount of homes entering the marketplace is up 18% year over year and the pricing fell at the fastest pace since the financial crisis. That's not good. However, rents, ironically enough, usually there's a correlation. Right now we're not seeing that. And there's there's actually not only a correlation, but there's usually a causation. So in other words, uh, rentals start going down, people don't start buying, and then they, they actually start staying in their rentals. But we're actually seeing rents rise, concessions decrease. So concessions are lower security, free months, don't worry about the broker, we'll pay for the broker, you know, free broker fees, things like that. However, the concessions were harder to find and the rents were actually up 2.4%. Very interesting, let me just break that down for a second. And the reason being is that a lot of people say, okay, well, I'm reading this on the news, I'm seeing this on the Wall Street Journal, the New York Times and everything else. This is the, and, and listen, it's like anything else, pulse of the market, it all comes down to that. Let's move on to Brooklyn. So the pulse of the market is literally week to week. Because the reason being is that when these numbers are compiled, and then I actually say this, we're still a little, there's still a little, still a little of a lag because we went through Christmas and New Year's. Let's move on to Brooklyn. So Northwest Brooklyn, we kind of break Brooklyn into two parts. You have Northwest Brooklyn, which is Williamsburg, and then you have South, South Brooklyn. Well, it's not really South, you know, it's Southern area of Brooklyn, which is like Carroll Gardens, right around there, Park Slope. So Northwest Brooklyn, where they have the L train, pricing actually rose 4.3%, which is very, very interesting because the L train is shutting down in April of this year for 18 months. It's the MTA, so let's not keep that promises. You know, it's probably gonna be more like 24 months or three years. It's a big, big deal. A lot of rentals actually decrease because people don't wanna move there. And then I think that actually has to do a lot of people moving from Brooklyn, rental wise, into Manhattan. Pricing rose in Northwest Brooklyn 4.3%. The overall borough is just up 1.6. So Brooklyn is still increasing their pricing. However, this is a big number that inventory actually rose. The amount of homes that are coming onto the market rose 20.7%, almost 21% year over year. That's a lot. What are we going to see? We're already see so it's up, pricing is up slightly. However, the amount of homes that enter the market is up 20.7%. That's a lot of homes. So you need either a lot of buyers or you need a lot of those homes to come off the market. Those are the only ways to actually increase pricing or decrease the amount of inventory. The amount of sellers that lowered their price increased 5%. So you're obviously get your you know, obviously Econ 101, you have more homes on the market. There's not enough buyers. The pricing is going to go down. I don't think we're going to see that in January and February. Mar we might start seeing that in March and April. Northwest Brooklyn, the rents, as I talked about with the L train, the rents actually went down. Concessions were harder to find. So overall rents for whatever reason, you know, I think there's a lot of jobs to be had in New York City. I think a lot of people are actually moving back to the city. I know myself is that a lot of people, especially in the older range, older range of say, my kids are out of school or they're going to college or, you know, I want to move back to the city or get a second home. I think there's a lot more people that are actually doing that. There's a trend moving back to the city from the suburbs, which is very interesting. Never has that been really the case, you know, in my parents. Our, our portion of that. So Queens, let's go into that. Pricing rose 
5%, which is a lot. Sales in Northwest Queens actually increased a lot, you know, 23%, which is a significant number. And the reason being is that the amount of sales, I should say, the amount of sales, not the pricing, the amount of sales actually rose. I don't think it, you know, some people say it's because of Amazon, Amazon's HQ2 announcement. I don't think it's because of that. I think just because the amount of homes that actually enter the marketplace was not as significant in Queens. In other words, the amount of inventory that enter the marketplace in Manhattan, Brooklyn, Manhattan and in Brooklyn, essentially lower the prices there, but not in Queens. Moving on is that again, rents, they rose slightly 1.8%. The amount of concessions offered to renters dropped significantly. Overall, you're seeing a very different marketplace between three of the boroughs, okay? For about five years, they were pretty consistent. In other words, rents were going up, pricing was going up, the amount of inventory coming on the market was kind of steady. Now we're seeing a lot of homes come on the market which is very interesting because for a couple of months now we've been talking about pricing has either stagnated or skidded in a couple of the boroughs so it's very interesting that a lot of the sellers are choosing to sell now maybe they're saying I would rather sell now than in a couple of months when we might see a worse marketplace personally this is the way that I see it is that we're in a normal market this is a nor this is normal. Before it was a frenzy. It was sold within a week. It was sold within a month. The normal marketplace is three months. Okay, that means the amount of inventory that comes on the market it usually sells within three months. Okay, when it sells within a m sells, I mean in contract. When it sells within a month or a weekend. That's a hot market. That's a seller's marketplace. Right now we're in a very normal market, but the one concern is the amount of inventory that's coming on the market. Like I said, 1400 homes enter the marketplace, which is up 18% in Manhattan. And again, in Brooklyn, it was up 20.7%. So 21% in Brooklyn, the amount of homes entering the marketplace. So that's really the number that I want to just kind of keep an eye on is yes, the amount of homes that have closed, but that's in the past. The amount of homes that are entering the marketplace is the most important number because if you have a significant amount of homes entering the marketplace, but you don't have it, a, enough buyers putting in offers, and I'll just give you a, a couple of stories, actually just one story, is that a lot of my buyers, they have a different mentality now. They're being uh, told this news through the New York Times, Wall Street Journal, and all the other publications, and essentially they're coming to the conclusion that I have time to wait. Before it was, I want to, I want to buy before the pricing continues to going up, continues to rise. Now they have the mentality that I actually think I want to save some time. I, I don't need to buy right now, or let's just see what else is out there. In other words, it's their choice. It's their pick of the litter. And one thing that I tell owners is that if we, if we don't put it on at the right price, if we don't market it at the right price, if you don't hire the right agent, this is not going to sell. This is not going to sell. You need a professional. You need someone that comes in and has a strategy. How are you actually going to market this? Who's going to be the buyer? What's the pricing? What are the comparables? What's in contract? What is sold recently? And ironically, recently is not three months. It's not two months it's what's in contract you email that real estate agent that has a home that's comparable and you say hey listen within one to two percent within three percent five percent where is this home in contract at you need to use contract sign more than what has sold because that was months ago that's a totally different marketplace than we're we're dealing with right now hire a professional because you know your your aunt nilly or your your friend's brother's son who just graduated college is not going to be able to navigate you through the complexity of an objective marketplace. An objective marketplace means that it is not emotional. It is not an emotional marketplace. It's more of a logical marketplace. This is sold. This is what I, I, I think the home is worth including any renovations or things that you have to actually put into the home. So hope this helps a little bit. Enjoy the January marketplace. It's going to be, it's going to be fun and interesting. You know, I'm excited. This, this essentially makes the job really valuable to my buyers, my sellers, my clients and everything else. If you guys have any questions, shoot me an email, charles at botenston.com. Have an amazing day. Subscribe to the video. And again, if you guys have any questions in regards to topics you want me to cover, email me. Have an amazing day. Talk to you guys soon.